Hello, sales managers, directors of sales, chief marketing officers, chief revenue officers, uh, executive vice presidents of sales and marketing, and anybody that has anything to do with the sales function and coaching salespeople. I'm Bill Shaka, and thanking you and welcoming you to another edition of Crush Your Company's Quota. Uh, today, here is what I would like to talk about. Motivating future performance by concentrating on present blessings. Needless to say, you are not going to be able to use that kind of terminology when you're coaching salespeople. But here is what I would like you to consider. Many people think that coaching needs to occur when things are going wrong or beginning to go wrong. I don't agree with that. I think you can coach people to greater levels of performance when they are already performing well. So here's what I'd like you to think about for future performance gains. Sit and talk with your salespeople, one at a time. Ask them. What do they think they are doing well right now that's having them hit quota? Because I assume by well, I'm, that's what we're talking about. They're at quota. They're at least at quota, maybe even better. What are they doing right now? What's causing that? And dig down to get their behaviors, their drive, their inkling. At that point, you may want to ask them, how can they apply those behaviors to other aspects of their sales cycle. So what you're doing is you're getting them to think in good times about what they are doing very well and then how they can take those skills and apply them to other areas of the sales cycle. Other areas of their life, if they so choose to go there, that may be, uh, may be beyond the purview of how you would want to coach them. But I believe that by utilizing those particular coaching skills, what's going to happen is your salespeople are going to begin to do even better while they are doing well. You know, there's an old saying in sales. The best time to make a sale is directly after you made a sale. Think about it. You're smelling blood. Now's the time to go hunting. Let's go after more. <clears throat> and I think we could extend that with behavioral attributes of selling. When is the best time to alter a behavioral attribute that may only be working average for you when you identify a great attribute? and are motivated to then take that and apply it to the average or perhaps below average attributes that can be keeping you from selling properly. Like, look folks, if you have a tremendous prospector, somebody who's going in front, getting in front of people and it's very easy for them to do that, but you notice that even though they are at plan, their closing ratio based on the number of sales they have, is on the lower side. Why? Maybe it's their question asking ability. Maybe it's their presentation skills. Maybe it's their listening skills. The point is this. If you can get them to focus the positive behavioral attributes of their prospecting efforts and take that emotion that they use to, to prospect and move it to question asking, what you've done is you've created a sales monster. And they're going to exceed plan because now they've already got the prospecting behavior built into place and you're making them more efficient during the sales cycle. You know sales managers, ultimately, Coaching should not only occur when things are going incorrectly, when things are heading south. Coaching should also occur when things are going well. And by doing that, you are going to be preventing things from going south. 
you're going to be preventing things from not going well. So, coach future performance by looking at the blessings of today, looking at the strengths of today. And I think if you do that, you and your sales staff will be well on your way to crushing your company's quota. Bill Shaka, thanking you for your time. Looking forward to seeing you in the next edition. Bye.